What's up, mathletes? It's Math Life here. Today we're going to talk about this concept of how do we find slope, aka rate of change, when it's not constant, meaning when it's nonlinear. So I have two examples here. I have a table and I have a graph. If we look at the table, notice it is not constant. It goes 3, 4, 2, 1. So there isn't a pattern here. Um, and if I look at the graph, it is definitely not linear. It doesn't make a straight line. It's made up of a bunch of a straight lines, but it's not one constant straight line. So we're going to talk about how to find the rate of change between non-linear or non-constant tables and graphs. So let's look at our table here. Let's say we wanted to find the rate of change from Monday to Wednesday. Okay. Well, there's really no data points here. There's no numbers. So what we can do is we can take our days and then turn them into specific numbers. So on Monday, that's day zero, all right? So we start off, it's like our initial value. We start with zero, okay? And then we can turn this into one, two, three. So this is one day after Monday, Monday two days after Monday, three days after Monday, all right? And now we find the rate of change. Again, we're going from Monday to Wednesday. All right, let's figure out if I can spell that. What's that rate of change, Monday to Wednesday? <clears throat> so we can either recreate the table or we can just do the math here. If I notice from Monday, it goes plus two. And from here, it goes minus one. So remember our rate of change is the change in Y over the change in X. So it's going to be negative 1 over 2. <clears throat> and what does that really mean? Well, it means we have watched one less hour going in two days. So negative 1 hours per two days. All right, let's look at our graph here. If I wanted to find the rate of change between let's say this is really 2015 right because if we're going by years here i don't have a graph break <clears throat> all right so if i want to find the rate of change from 2015 to 2016 again i'm going to do the change in y over the change in x so change in y over change in x sorry about my handwriting there and if i look from 2015 2016 the change in y is 350 to 250 so minus 100 and that's dollars so we're saving some money or we're spending some money or some kind of money you know it's all about the money okay and we're going over one year so it is a hundred dollars in one year now you may be saying to yourself mr. Stauffer I can see that in the graph yeah that's right you can definitely look at it $100 in one year, what happens if I ask you to find the rate of change from 2016 to 2019? 2019. And again, we're, this really means we're trying to find the average rate of change. So the average rate of change. Well, if I look at 2016, I can kind of draw a dotted line. I'm really looking at how does that change, what's the average change per year from 2016 to 2019? So uh, I can look at my points here. This is the point 2016, comma, 250. This is the point right here, 2019, comma, Let's see, I guess 200. And if we talk about the change in Y over the change in X, we look that we're changing in Y, we're going down $50, so negative $50. Over how many years? In this case, we're going three years. And we could leave it as this fraction, or we could divide those. And I don't want my calculator, but let's see, negative one, it goes in one time with two left over, 16 point, let's see, 16.6 dollars .6 per year. All right, 
Make sure that you copy any of this down, rewatch if you're a little confused, ask any questions, and thanks for watching, Mathletes.